center of napkin. Wow. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tell Player Mouse. Today we're going to look at the D Duplex Broadhead line of shotgun slugs. Now many of you know these already as the Hexalit 32s, but it appears that D Duplex felt that Broadhead was a little more memorable name than Hexalit 32 or Dupo 28. So they've kind of remarketed and rebranded these as the Broadhead. Now if you would never seen this slug before, and I just took it out of the shell and hand you the slug itself, you probably wouldn't even know what it was. You probably think it was a, an armature out of a motor or something. Heck, it even looks like a little pulley that would drive a V-belt. But what this is, is a an expanding steel shotgun slug. And really, it does more than just expand. It expands and then it fragments like a hand grenade inside your target through hydrostatic shock. The six very sharp little teeth break off and become their own projectiles spreading out throughout the wound cavity and cause even more damage. While the slug hasn't really changed, the packaging has changed a little bit. Still a nice bright yellow box, but more of an emphasis on the name Broadhead rather than Hexalit 32. Now these are pretty much what we would call a universal slug, meaning you could shoot it out of a fully rifled shotgun or shoot them out of a smoothbore shotgun with pretty much the same type of accuracy. The other slug we'll be demonstrating today is called the Broadhead Dupo 28. Now the biggest difference between this and the yellow Hexalit 32 is this only weighs one ounce, the Hexalit weighs one and an eighth ounce. And you will feel just a little less recoil using the Dupo 28s. Now let's look at the specifications and this is where it gets interesting. The Dupo 28 actually shoots at a higher velocity than the Hexalit 32. The heavier Hexalit 32 has slightly higher muzzle energy but there's only a difference of 80 foot pounds. Now these are very similar slugs as you can see but the Dupo 28s cost $9 for a box of five, and the Hexalits cost $10 for a box of five. I would have thought they'd cost the same. We have the Broadhead Hexalit 32, 32 grains, and then the... Grams. Grams. And the, <laughs> yes, I don't want to mess those up. And then the Dupo 28, and I'll let you guess how many grams that is. So they are not expanding, they are actually fragmenting rounds, as you can see there on the picture. We're going to give them a try yellow and red okay dupo 28 fire oh, hexalit 32 okay i'm ready wow. <laughs> all right here comes our dupo 28 you'll notice the slug oscillates a little bit as it's flying along However, that didn't seem to affect its accuracy much. We had a nice dead center hit, and look at those teeth just expand and they break off and fragment, and the rest of the slug just kept on going for about 150 yards. Now let's compare that to the Hexalit 32. Here it comes. Still a little bit of oscillation, as we've seen with the Dupo 28, and whammo, again, the same fragmenting action. The teeth on the Hexalit 32 are larger and heavier and we seem to have a little more violent reaction to our gel target. All right, bye. Here we go. Of course, no test is complete without a shot at the 20 pound lead plate. The impact caused all the teeth to break off and also knocked all the plastic off the slug too. The crater it left is what you would expect to see with a one and an eighth ounce slug traveling at 1400 feet per second. All right, here we go, ballistic loaf. Woo, I tell you, we got one big giant hole. Now we were expecting all the teeth to impact our backboard, kind of spreading out in a 45 degree cone of destruction. But the angle was actually much wider than that, um, probably around 70 degrees. So you can imagine how many more vitals those teeth would hit inside the target. So we don't know where we hit the uh, ballistic loaf. The good news is it's still in good enough shape we can take it to Christmas dinner. <laughs> However, over here, you will see that some pieces uh, fragmented off. 
this is exactly how it was supposed to come apart, at least in these little shards like this. This little triangular shard here is embedded in our little piece of uh, masonite board. And another triangular shaped piece hit right here, but has bounced out somewhere. So only two of them. And of course, that was where the vast majority of the mass went through. We don't know. <laughs> Okay, it's the fragmentation is what you heard. And here comes our Hexlet 32. The uh, biggest difference I see is a larger temporary wound cavity. That's big enough to put your fist in, by the way. Uh, again, the teeth fragmented at a very wide angle, which would just drop a deer in its tracks. Uh, both rounds are very impressive, but we do see slight differences in the... Uh, you know, amount of energy on impact. In typical Tau Flater Mouse fashion, our green works is actually blue. Here we go, green works. Here we go, green works. Now our targets are only about 20 inches in front of our backboard, which is about two feet by two feet. Again, the teeth spread out very wide and pretty much all of them missed our backboard completely and that's a wide angle of destruction. Cats everywhere man. Five gallons full of Taylor Swift tears. <laughs> yes. Okay I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. Wow. Here we, go. Oh. we hit here. <laughs> seemed to tear out the right side look, of look the Look at tree. that. See that? That could be a shard coming out. Yeah. There. Yeah. There was one back here too. Okay. Or is that the main body? I don't know. This. This is punctured as if it's, it's got some stress marks to it. I yeah. That's from the shark. Again, a very good example of hydrostatic shock, but just on a larger scale. The slug just ripped open that five gallon jug. Again, we see a couple of teeth flying off in different directions. Uh, just a devastating impact, folks. Yeah, I would, I would go for the hydrostatic tactical beats tactical, whenever you're ready. Tactical beats by Dr. Dre. <laughs> when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh boy. I got nailed with a piece of something. Did you? Are I think you, you blew up every one. Wow, that I was did. <laughs> terrible. How did it blow up every one? I don't know, but you'll have the evidence right there. That's gonna be cool. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh cool. boy. <laughs> so this was the beats can, which oddly enough blew <laughs> into pieces and flew right off the top. The other one hit right in between these two uh, plum tomato cans. What the hell are plum tomatoes? And just look at this destruction. Just wrinkled that metal like a train. And then you can see the blast against uh, Kurt. Oh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> look at there's a shard though. We captured one. We captured an additional shard that we were not able to capture before. So. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure that's not the one that we. Because we, we moved not, it, didn't we? No, that one's not. This is the little. Oh, guy. okay, this okay. Is the little guy we had from before. This one's new. Okay. So they are coming apart. We just don't know where the hell all those parts are going. Yeah. It's... But this is phenomenal damage. <laughs> Gotta say, that's a pretty impressive shot. One slug taking out three cans. Not too bad, Greg. And when you have old expired cans of vegetables in your pantry, instead of risking botulism, why not shoot them? Now we gotta wash it down. Wow. Hey, before that board went over, it looked like it cleaned it off. Yeah. I think it did. Wow. One thing we've learned is you save the bottle of soapy water for last, to wash off the table and everything else. And to prove that even a small stack of wet napkins can cause the slugs to fragment, there you go. Very impressive round. Now we had a couple boxes left over, so I just hand them to Greg and let him go for it. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, well, he's gonna just take some sequential shots, see where his grouping is. Go for it. Yeah. 
And there you go. All right. So, hey, thanks to Mountain Goats for the uh, target, first of all. It's a pretty dang cool target. Yeah, let me walk around and kind of show that thing off. It is a... Uh, it is very sturdy. Man portable, as long as you're walking only about 10 or 15 feet. Yeah, it's a little heavy, but it is fully, you know, protects itself. Looks like a little goat. Get it? It kind of does, like a ram or something. Pointed downward so everything hits the ground. Yeah, nice heavy steel plate and it's up here on a spring, so yeah, absorbs it's, it's, a little it's nice. of its own recoil. And uh, I always put I put the link to his Facebook page there if you're interested in that. And as a testament to this AR500 steel, this is the 458 SOCOM that you saw us shoot earlier, and uh, made little dinky pock marks in there. However, those duplex slugs we just shot completely. I think smooth. because it was it was around the welds. Maybe I, I don't. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, it's completely smooth where those slugs hit that thing. So that's that's some pretty serious steel right there. Yeah. I have to build a house out of this stuff. <laughs> well, not too bad. Not too bad. Hopefully, no. Duplex will be happy that we film that time. to pretend it's my feeling will win in the end i won't harm you but touch your defenses venom